today we will be discussing the corporate governance structure in other countries so here we will be discussing the corporate governance structures in australia in singapore in united kingdom so that we are going to discuss in our today's session we will start with corporate governance in australia now we have seen the corporate governance structure or the guidelines or the rules and regulations which all the companies which are listed have to follow in india all the duties all the responsibility all the roles of the company officials as well as board of directors are written very clearly and every organization has to follow the guidelines of corporate governance so in india the structure of corporate governance that we have already discussed now we will be concentrating on <coughs> the corporate governance structure in other countries if we talk about australia the corporate governance structure of australia is based on eight principles it is not like the indian corporate governance structure where everything is written where everything is mentioned in the companies act under corporate governance so there eight principles are given and it is expected that the guidelines or the role and responsibility or the rules made by the organization related to companies those rules should be based on these eight principles so the basic difference is that if we talk about indian corporate governance structure everything is written everything is shared with the organizations the guidelines have to be followed by the organization as it is that is in india but if we compare this with australia all the guidelines are not in written form but what they have done is they have made eight principles and it is compulsory for all the companies which are working in australia that they have to prepare the rules related to their company functioning and these rules should be based on these eight principles now what those eight principles are that now we will be discussing so first principle lay solid foundations for management and oversight so very simple principle is there lay foundation for management and oversight for management and oversight means that the organization structure should be clearly mentioned by the company and who will be overseeing that organizational structure that should also be mentioned here now we have seen in our earlier sessions that in india the board of directors 
is considered as the highest authority in uh, uh, for a particular company all the policies are to be made at this highest level at the board level so management of the company is different and board of directors of the company is different that is in the written form and it is known to everyone it is there in the corporate governance guidelines in india but in australia the first principle says that whenever the company is to be created the management should lay foundation for the company management as well as the authority which will be overseeing the functioning of the company so it is very much related to the board of directors in india that a separate entity is to be formed which should control the organization or which should oversee the organization instead of control we can say which can oversee the functioning of the organization whether they are following the eight principles mentioned in the australian corporate governance structure or not so that is the first principle lay solid foundations for management and oversight next principle says structure the board to be effective and add value second principle structure the board to be effective so the board should be structured in a manner that it should be effective and add value add value means that board should be such a board which should add value to the organization so the second principle says that board should be effective board should be effective means the people who are part of the board of directors of a company should be effective when they will be effective when they are given authority when they are given power and when they are intelligent enough to use those powers then only we can expect that the board will be effective what will happen if yes powers are there with the board of directors but board of directors are illiterate they are not aware of the technical functionality of a particular company power is there but whether these uneducated or illiterate or the person who is not having knowledge related to the technical aspects of the company if such thing happens even if power is given the board cannot be effective for a board to be effective two things are essential one that yes power should be given but the second most important thing is the power should be used properly the person should have that much of knowledge that much of talent what will happen that if a balance sheet is placed before the board of directors and some of the board of directors are unable to interpret the balance sheet itself so what the company can expect from these type of board of directors so what is expected is that board should be effective and it should add value to the organization so it will be effective it will add value if the board is given power and if the directors who are part of the board are having intelligence they are intelligent enough to use those powers now in india also we have seen that recently a amendment was suggested by a committee in the corporate governance guideline and that was that the chairman of the board 
and the topmost authority it can be general manager it can be managing director it can be ceo of the organization these two positions are to be held by two different people next important change in the indian corporate governance guideline was that the chairman of the board will be a non executive director or an independent director he will not be a executive director why this change was implemented the logic is very simple that if a executive director for example the managing director of the company is also the chairman of board of directors then all the authority will be vested in one person only here we can see that all the powers all the authority is concentrated in one person only and he is handling two position and both the positions are the topmost position topmost position of the organization that is he is managing director there and at the board also he is the chairman so what will happen whatever he feels he is having the authority to create those strategies create those rules and regulations for the organization he can pass the decisions why he can pass the decisions easily because he is having the highest authority at the organization and at the board also that is why a change was introduced in the corporate governance guidelines in india also that two different positions to be held by two different people and the chairman of the board of directors should not be the executive director of the company now in australia also the same principle is there that the board structure should be effective and it should add value the basic difference is in india everything is written and it is written in detail whereas in australia just they have framed the principles and all the organizations have to follow those principles they cannot go against those principles right so in australia also it is expected that board should be effective and it should add value to the organization it should not happen so uh, while uh, selecting or while nominating the directors at the board of directors of an organization the uh, organization should see to it that the board of directors are talented people are experienced people are experts in the field the organization is in then only they can expect good suggestions good ideas good strategies from the board of directors at the board level otherwise not so the second structure that uh, this that was the second principle now the third principle says instill a culture of acting lawfully ethically and responsibly instill means inculcate a culture of acting lawfully ethically and responsibly very simple but having a very deep meaning very important instill a culture means inculcate a culture in the organization to be lawful ethical and responsible lawful very simple a culture should be created in the organization that is the third principle in uh, the australia which says that the culture should be lawful no organization should try to do anything which is against the law of australia that is one thing second everything should be ethical ethical means 
no bad practice should be implemented in the organization we gain which is against the human principles people or the employee should not be exploited in the organization all the information which is prepared by the organization should be transparent should be correct and should be shared with all the stakeholders and the people who are at the top position at the organization level as well as at the board level they should act responsibly <coughs> act responsibly means people should be aware of what is their role and responsibilities and they should complete those roles responsibly if the managing director is having a role that it should monitor the day to day function functioning of the organization carefully then he should responsibly do this function do his role do his duties and that is what is expected in the third principle next one is the principle 4 is related to safeguard the integrity of corporate reports corporate reports means whatever reports or whatever financial statements which are prepared by the organization those reports are to be prepared in a proper manner and there should not be any manipulation related to financial statements so in india also we have seen very clearly the structure is very clear in india audit committee is there in all the organizations appointed by the board of board of directors the function of audit committee is what to see to it that no financial irregularity is taking place in the organization same is the situation in australia also but here all these committees are not created but here what is expected is that the principles are there and whenever an organization is coming up that organization has to see to it that it will respect and it will follow these eight principles of corporate governance so like india everything is written and shared with the companies such thing is not happening or happens in australia the government has just prepared the guidelines or eight principles and have suggested the companies that whatever rules you will be making related to the day to day functioning of your company those rules should be in line with these eight principles of corporate governance it should not go against these eight principles so that is related to the rule number 4 or guideline uh, principle number 4 next one make timely and balanced disclosure disclosure of what disclosure of the financial status of the organization if it is expected that every 6 months the organization should disclose the figures related to finance of the organization that what is the financial health of the organization 
or if the rule is that every year the organization has to release the balance sheet or has to publish the balance sheet on the website of the organization so that all the stakeholders can just have a look or can check the financial status of the organization or the financial health of the organization so that timely make timely balance disclosure that is called as timely disclosure if it is expected that every year the company will be disclosing its financial uh, statements or they will be disclosing their uh, balance sheet if the company is taking more than one year to disclose it then it is going against the principle so what is expected is no strict rules are there but you have to follow the principles if you do not follow the principles then strict action can be taken against you in india everything is clear everything is in written the rules are written if you do not follow these rules what action will be taken against you is also a person is aware of the companies are aware of that if they are making any manipulation in the balance sheet if they are not disclosing the balance sheet what strict action will be taken against them so everything is known to the company but in australia the company is preparing their own rules but the rule should not go against the principle if the principle says that every year the company has to disclose the balance sheet the company has to disclose the balance sheet it cannot say that we have as we have prepared our own rules so we can make a rule that instead of one year we will be sharing the uh, balance sheet after one and a half year or after two years or after three years or after five years because we are preparing the own rules our own rules but if any rule goes against the principles of corporate governance uh, uh, in australia then that rule becomes unlawful it is it will be considered as illegal now uh, the next guideline uh, so uh, sorry the next principle is uh, principle number 6 respect the rights of security holders in simple words here we can say shareholders respect the rights of shareholders one of the principles in uh, india also we have discussed that a separate committee is created by the organization which will be looking after the interest of small shareholders that we have seen the name of the company the uh, Uh, functioning of the company or the constitution of the company uh, that committee that we have seen small stakeholder committee in india a separate committee is created but in australia no such committees are created but a principle is there and all the organization have to respect that principle and the principle says that respect the rights of security holders shareholders the company has to respect the rights of the shareholders they cannot go against the rights or they cannot violate the rights of the shareholders now here in india we have seen that the committee the small shareholder committee or those small stakeholders committee they are one of the function of the committee is see to it that whatever information or whatever profit or whatever dividend the company has announced shall reach the um, every shareholder or the smallest shareholder a person who is having say 10 20 50 shares shall also receive shall also get that benefit get that dividend that is the responsibility of small stakeholder company in india but if we 
compare it with the Australian uh, corporate governance structure, where they have prepared a principle that all the organization have to respect the right of the security holders, the right of the shareholders. They cannot go against the shareholders. So no separate committee is there, but organization has to see to it that interest of all the shareholders, whether small, whether medium, whether uh, big uh, shareholders, all the shareholders' rights are to be protected. Next one. <coughs> Principle number seven is recognize and manage risk. If risk are involved in the business what risks are there if the suppose technology is changing and because of uh, technological shift if some risks are involved then it should be recognized it should be known to the organization that suppose the uh, automobile uh, a company is there and it is manufacturing uh, two wheelers two wheelers which are based on uh, which uh, run on uh, uh, petrol now such two wheeler company shall always think of the risk it may have in future so in next five years, what risk the company will be facing? Next three years, what risk the company may face? Next year, what the company may uh, risk may face? In the long run, 10 years, five years, six years, seven years, what will be the or what could be the risk for the company? Now we have seen that all the major automobile companies have started manufacturing electric two-wheelers, electric vehicles. Why? Because they have started predicting the risk. They have started, uh, they have predicted the risk that as the petrol price is increasing, as in the near future, there will be acute shortage of petrol. So they have to shift or they have to think of something else which they can bank upon in the near future if the company does not think about that risk okay now suppose if hero hero motocorp is for the last so many years they are at the top and if they do not predict the risk what will happen can we guarantee that for the next five years also they will be at the top? Can we guarantee that next 10 years for the last, uh, say, uh, 10, 20 years, they are at the top? So next at least 10 years, they will be at the top level. So this cannot be given. Why? Because of increased price in the petrol products or because of the various benefits which the government is providing to promote the electric vehicles or the acute shortage of petrol in the near future. This could be the reasons. So all these will be termed as risk factors. So what is expected is that the organization should always study the risk factors and it should come up with the ideas how they can overcome this these risk factors so bo when board of director is considered as highest authority of any organization it is the responsibility of the board of director to see to it that the organization remains profitable in the near future also or in the distant future also and how it can see it has to predict it has to uh, think about the risks 
the organization will be facing and how this risk can be overcome now why the companies have started manufacturing the electric vehicles the reason is very simple that every organization every company wants to be at the top position in the country so that is why five years back all small scale companies were there all new startups were coming up and they were investing in manufacturing of electric vehicles the major players were not but now we see all the major players all the major players are coming up with electric vehicles new designs are being created new uh, say uh, benefits are given to the uh, customers some sort of uh, subsidies are given by the government also that if you purchase a uh, electric two wheeler uh, this much discount will be given to on the uh, actual price of the that particular two wheeler so all these things are given to promote the sale of electric two wheelers and now all the companies are aware that yes if they want to be successful in the long run they have to uh, first predict the risk and then they have to manage that risk ki agar bhavishya mein bahut price badh gaya petrol nahi mil raha hai now we are aware of what is happening in uh, russia and ukraine because of this war or if this war extends then there can be a acute shortage of petrol not in the future but in the present also bahut jaldi agar jitna zyada ye war aage chalega utna zyada hame shortage ho sakta hai and if other countries also join in the war then the situation will be alarming so all these situations are to be studied at the board level that if this situation takes place what risk will be there to our organization if in after 5 years there is no petrol or there is a very short will happen to our company this sort of analysis this sort of discussion should take place at the board level what risk the company is facing now if you read the newspapers you might have read what is happening in now sri lanka last week a news was there on ndtv which stated that the prices of the petrol or petroleum products has increased their petrol price has increased by 50 to 70 rupees within a day ek din mein 50 se 70 rupaye badh gaya petrol now in sri lanka the price of 1 uh, liter petrol costs around 250 rupees 250 rupaye ka 1 liter petrol agar aisi situation hoti hai to company should always predict ki agar 250 rupaye liter petrol hoga to hamara jo bike hai wo bikegi kya kya log sasti bike ki taraf jayenge petrol ye electric bike ki taraf jayenge कि ठीक है चार्जिंग में इतना खर्चा नहीं आता यहां पर एक लीटर डालने के लिए ढाई सौ रुपए लग रहे तो लोग बाइक चलाना ही बंद कर देंगे या कम कर देंगे अगर बंद नहीं करेंगे अगर कम करेंगे तो ऑटोमेटिकली बिक्री बंद हो जाएगी अगर बिक्री बंद हो गई तो जितना भी इन्वेंट्री उनका गोडाउन में रखा हुआ है वो सारा वेस्ट हो जाएगा वो सब वेस्ट हो गया तो कंपनी को लॉस होगा सो ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर कॉल्ड एज रिस्क फैक्टर्स so at the board level one of the principles or principle number 7 uh, says recognize and manage risk the company has to recognize the risk 
and once recognition is done yes this is the risk then how they are going to manage that risk that should be known to the company so that is uh, recognizing and managing risk next one remunerate fairly and responsibly that is one of the principle of corporate governance in australia remunerate fairly and responsibly in india we have seen that a separate committee is formed you might be aware of india is considered as a country with the highest number of committees jitni committees hamare yahan par hai utni committees puri duniya ke kisi desh mein nahi we are a country with highest committees as well as the committee without any result for that also we are at the top level in the news also day to day news also we see that if suppose uh, any accident takes place immediately a committee is formed that we have formed a committee now the committee will go through with all the things and they will give their report so this way it is not 100 but it is thousands of committees are formed same way one committee is called as remuneration uh, nomination and remuneration committee in india the job of the committee is to see to it that the directors at the board level are paid a good amount or good salary or a good uh, say package so that the experts can be included on the board of directors of the organization a separate committee is formed in india in australia no such separate committee is there they have given the principles and it is expected that all the companies with comply with those principles that is the uh, structure there so remunerate fairly means the company has to remunerate or has to uh, pay the directors fairly fairly matlab ki jitna company ka profit hai aur jitna company practically kar sakti hai utna dena chahiye then only the company can expect good or expert people joining the company's board if company is making profit but company is sharing say a very less amount very less salary for uh, with the board of directors then the company cannot expect the experts to join their board because whenever the company will be say releasing their uh, advertisement related to um, appointments or vacancies at the board level or whenever they are approaching the would be directors Uh, to come and join their company as a director on the board they have to attract them with a good package if very less package is given good people are not to be uh, uh, they cannot expect that experts will be joining their board of directors 
so remuneration part is one of the important part agar aap achhi salary denge tabhi aap achhe log apni or attract kar sakte hain वैसे किसी भी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन अगर आपको अच्छे लोग चाहिए टैलेंटेड लोग चाहिए बेस्ट परफॉर्मर चाहिए तो यू शुड हैव यू हैव टू पे देम अकॉर्डिंगली यू कैन नॉट एक्सपेक्ट दैट ओके कि मेरा जो एवरेज एम्प्लॉई है उसका सैलरी है दस हजार रुपये मुझे एक बहुत अच्छा एम्प्लॉय चाहिए अगर मेरी कंपनी ने एक एड रिलीज की और उसमें लिखा कि वी विल पे टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज and we are expecting very talented people to apply for this position apply karenge kya log nahi karenge because they will see that when a uh, most average person is getting 10000 rupees same salary they will uh, they are also being offered by the company and the company is expecting more results in that particular small amount so the experts or we can say the good employees the better or best employees will not be uh, will not join the organization why the reason is simple for that the company has to pay fairly fairly means कि जितना कंपनी कर सकती है जितना कंपनी की पोजीशन है उतना कंपनी ने पे करना इट इज नॉट सेड दैट इफ अ स्टार्टअप इज देयर दैट स्टार्टअप शुड पे वन करोड़ रुपीज टू दी बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स टू ईच बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स देन ओनली दे कैन एक्सपेक्ट और देन देन ओनली दे विल बी अट्रैक्टिंग गुड पीपल एट देयर बोर्ड so a startup cannot compare their remuneration package with a multinational company ab infosys ka jo package hai jitna wo remuneration board of directors ko dete hain shayad utna remuneration jo naya startup hai jo sirf 5 saal pehle abhi existence hua hai jiska that company is not in a position to pay that much and that's the reason why it is said that remuneration should be fairly paid depend upon the profit of the company ki company kitni badi hai company ka profit kitna hai uske base pe company unka jo bhi remuneration hai directors ka that can be decided on that basis so here the company cannot expect that all the companies there is no uniformity that if infosys is paying 1 cr uh, the uh, all the other company should also pay 1 cr to the directors this is not so what is expected in the principles given uh, in australia is a very simple principle the that principle says remunerate fairly that remuneration should be fair enough to attract talented people ab suppose talented people yahan par agar startup hai jo 2 saal pehle hi uh, jiska uh, creation hua hai jo bani hai wo company agar kam bhi package degi to bhi काफी टैलेंटेड लोग काफी एक्सपीरियंस uh, लोग uh, उसकी तरफ अट्रैक्ट हो सकते हैं वाई बिकॉज दे विल बी सींग द पैकेज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ द कंपनी कि कंपनी दो साल पहले आई है और अपने प्रॉफिट में से कितना वो शेयर करना चाहते हैं एक कंपनी दस साल से है वो कितना शेयर कर रही है एक कंपनी पिछले पचास साल से है वो कितना शेयर कर रही है so that is called as remunerate fairly if you are remunerating fairly then you can expect good people at your uh, in your organization so that is related to the uh, principles eight principles of corporate governance uh, to be followed by all the companies which are functioning in australia
so the uh, we will uh, see the other principles and the other uh, sorry uh, the corporate governance structures uh, in other countries some of the countries which we will be discussing is uh, singapore we will be discussing then we will be discussing uh, uk united kingdom also in next lecture uh, we will try to complete both the countries so come prepared it will be better for all of us if more students are there and more discussion takes place in the class so thank you everyone for being present in today's session thank you thank you sir